A White House staffer and many Democrats have taken to social media attempting to rebrand President Biden as quote unquote dark Brandon, but with sub 40 approval ratings and the highest inflation in 40 years and now a recession, I don't think even a rebranding will work all that well. We'll get to all that and much more later on. So hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. As always, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, so make sure to give this video a like, but also leave a comment giving your thoughts about everything that is currently going on. Okay, so last night, according to the New York Post, the FBI raided Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, breaking into his safe, reportedly searching for classified documents. Allegedly, Trump brought these documents with him from the White House to his home after his presidency ended, which, if that were true, it could be a violation of federal law. The National Archives and Records Administration said it had found classified materials in 15 boxes at the residence earlier this year and alerted the FBI. So this was basically the reason behind the raid of the former president of the United States. However, we really won't know whether or not the FBI had strong enough intel for the raid until we see the warrant and warrant application, but considering it was proved that Hillary Clinton possessed classified information and her home wasn't raided, meanwhile, the Department of Justice repeatedly looked the other way on stories regarding Hunter Biden's laptop, there's a real good case to be made that the DOJ and FBI have become a one-way, weaponized political bureaucracy. In a statement by Trump on his Truth social media, he wrote, These are dark times for our nation, as my beautiful home in Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida is currently under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Nothing like this has ever happened to a president of the United States before. After working and cooperating with relevant government agencies, this unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate. Such an assault could only take place in broken third world countries. Sadly, America has now become one of those countries corrupt at a level not seen before. They even broke into my safe. What is the difference between this and Watergate where operatives broke into the Democrat National Committee? Here, in reverse, Democrats broke into the home of the 45th President of the United States. Now, the argument against this raid being necessary and actually completely insane is that the President has the ability to declassify materials before leaving the White House, so we're really going to need to see more specifics in this case. But I have to say here, if this all turns out to be a product of the growing political weaponization of federal law enforcement agencies, we have an even stronger case on why people should be absolutely outraged by the plan to add 87,000 new agents to the IRS. If they can do this against a former president, just imagine what they can do to you and me. But again, we'll have to see what other information comes out over the next week. If they don't have a very strong case for the raid, there's definitely going to be hell to pay. Okay, so in some other news, according to a key Federal Reserve Bank of New York, consumers' expectations for where inflation will be one year from now fell sharply in July. In June, consumers expected inflation to be 6.8% one year from now, but now the median expectation is that inflation will be just 6.2%. That's still a pretty high number. Now, three years from now, consumers see inflation cooling off to a little bit more of what we're used to at 3.2%, but it won't be until 2027, five years from now, where we're back to that 2% number, which the idea that any inflation, even 2% is a good thing at all, is pretty insane, considering that even a 2% yearly jump in inflation would result in a huge drop in value of whatever money that you're currently holding. If you put $1,000 into a checking account, over 10 years, inflation would have eaten away at that amount by 20%, going by that 2% yearly number. So all of a sudden, the $1,000 that you left in your bank is now only worth $800. Now on Wednesday, the inflation report for July will be released, where it should be pretty interesting to see if it's gone up even more, stayed the same, or perhaps started going down a little. This is also something for those receiving Social Security benefits to look out for, as many experts predict inflation could continue moving even higher and possibly push the cost of living adjustment above the 10% mark. If this happens, it would be the largest increase in Social Security benefits since 1981. Now, to determine the cost of living adjustment, the SSA looks at the third quarter CPIW data, then compares that to the third quarter of the current year. 
So for June, we saw a 9.8% increase from the previous year. So now we just need data for the next few months to get the full picture. Now, a recent estimate by the Senior Citizens League is that the cost of living adjustment for 2023 will be 10.5%, which on average would be a $175 increase to the monthly retirement benefit. Now, if you want to find out what type of increase it would be for you, all you have to do is simply multiply 10.5% by your gross benefit amount. So let's say that you receive $2,000 per month. If we multiply that amount by 10.5%, we get $2,210. Of course, if Medicare Part B premiums also increase, you may also see a lower amount in your payments, considering those are typically deducted from Social Security checks. Now, other than the cost of living adjustment, there are currently also a couple of different bills in Congress, which would also automatically increase the monthly payments for those receiving Social Security benefits by right around $200 per month, but these are also bills, unfortunately, that haven't really seen too much momentum and have been more of those all talk, no action type of bills. So we'll have to see if any of them actually get voted on. Okay, so now moving into some money news where stocks yesterday started the day out strong, but then fell relatively flat with the S&P 500 in the red by 0.12%, the Dow Jones up slightly by 0.08%, and the NASDAQ down by 0.10%. For today, markets do look to be opening in the green though, with Dow futures currently up by 0.21%, S&P 500 futures up 0.20%, and NASDAQ futures up 0.10%. Meanwhile, the Fear and Greed Index, which measures just how investors feel about today's market, has now risen up to neutral, which is the highest it's been since the beginning of June. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're in a spot where investors feel extremely comfortable to invest in the market, but also at least we're no longer in extreme fear. Since we've actually seen some pretty solid gains to start the second half of the year after completing one of the worst first halves in history, we can see why this change in opinion may be taking place. As far as Bitcoin goes, after making some pretty solid gains over the weekend to get back into the 24,000s, over the last day, it has fallen back down by 1.48%. Still, over the last month, it's been going pretty strong, up by nearly 10%. So with the stock market and Bitcoin having some really solid momentum of late, it definitely wouldn't be a bad time to start investing, or if you have already started investing, to continue dollar cost averaging in. So if you would like to receive six free stocks and $5 worth of Bitcoin, in the comment section below, I will be leaving a link where you can receive just that from my partner in Webull. And even if you don't feel like investing at this time for whatever reason, once you receive the free stocks, you can always sell them for what they're worth and transfer that money right back to your bank account. Now, in total, you should be receiving a value of right around $50 or even more. Some people have even received over $3,000 in the past, which will be taxable, but still, you can think of that as just some free extra money with just a few minutes of work. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, I would encourage you to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to ring the notification bell. That way, you won't be missing any of my future videos. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, and I'll see you in the next video.